Anglo Gold Asante's uh, new uh, chief executive uh, or chief executive Mark Kusifani is stepping down. That's to take over as the head of Anglo American. Anglo Gold's uh, chief financial officer and technical development head will act as interim chief executive uh, executives. For more on this, uh, we're joined on the line by Stan Libs, a mining analyst, Quibus Null. Uh, Quibus, thank you so much for joining us today. So let's just get your view on uh, why do you think Mark Cutivani was uh, chosen for the role? Well, he's a highly respected leader, um, and he's you know he's got strong operational um, background, I mean, experience, obviously in, in deep level underground mining on the gold side. Um, as well as open course mining, and uh, obviously also given the diversification across continents of, of Anglo Gold's portfolio, um, you know, sort of being able to um, or having the experience of, of managing assets assets across continents, you know, and I guess on a, on, a, on a closer front, closer to home, you know, is 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 has been a key player in the, in the labour unrest we've seen, you know, as the president of the Chamber of Mines, uh, he's got a strong relationship with labour and government. And um, you know, he showed good leadership and maturity on the on the, on the recent uh, labour unrest that we've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just uh, look at uh, Anglo Gold Ashanti before we turn our attention to uh, Anglo American. Uh, just glancing back at those uh, operating margins back in 2007, sitting at minus 16%, and uh, sitting at around an estimated 30% at the end of fiscal 2012. So, so what's your view on the state of Anglo Gold Ashanti as uh, Mark Cutifani steps away? And uh, I suppose also looking at the, the, the kind of cost uh, trends that we've seen at the company and also production and grades from, from the gold miner? Look, perhaps mixed um, successes, you know, um, there is some areas where he's done very well and then, you know, I guess you will be leaving the company with one or two issues that's still sort of unresolved. Um, and I guess if you look at the company, you know, from an operational perspective and, and purely from, from production and cost and also the, the, the share price movement over the last three and a half years of Anglo Gold relative to gold fields, um, it, 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 it certainly did underperform gold fields, um, you know, on those metrics mm -hmm. um, as, a, as a standalone. Um, you know, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, as I said, um, you know, it's, it's difficult to put your finger exactly on, 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 the, on the exact reasons for that, whether it was more in terms of the actual assets and, and, and the quality of the assets that they moved through or whether it, it had something to do of how those assets were operated. Um, but, you know, um, I guess if one to s sort of put that aside, um, you know, Mark is a, is a, is a guy that, that's, that's got a lot of experience, you know, in, in, in the mining space and, um, yeah, is, 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 is a very strong uh, leader. Would it be fair to say that he leaves the Anglo Gold Ashanti perhaps in the cold, given the fact that, you know, they're only one year away from that 2014 strategy they've been working towards in terms of some of their growth uh, targets? They've also, of course, got a lot of new projects that are set to come online, starting with Tropicana this year in Australia. So a lot of new projects, and, and he's leaving the company at a time when uh, they're just starting to, to come forward. Uh, so, so what is your assessment on how that might impact the company? Yeah, certainly not the best time for Anglo Gold um, to see to see the back um, of him. Um, you know, he's um, someone that's been central to a lot of these initiatives that the company have been driving. And um, you know, I guess in many investors have been waiting for some of these results to show up. So, um, but then again, you know, um, these things you can't sort of exactly plan them. And um, I guess the one, one, you know, the one thing one gotta say is um, Mark did manage to establish a very strong team, internal team around him within the company. Mm -hmm. um, you know that that should leave the company in good hands. And of course, two uh, deputy CEOs standing in for now. Uh, talking about Anglo American, what's your assessment as to the priority areas? We've been talking uh, for much of the time about uh, Anglo American Platinum and the review there. So, so what do you think uh, Qtifani needs to spend the majority of his time focusing on? Look, yeah, it's, it's obviously, you know, I think it, it's, it's not going to be a change overnight, you know. It, it will take time for him to sort of settle in. It's, it's a big portfolio that it's got to get his head around. Um, you, know, and, you know, and the standout is, is obviously the, you know, the, the, the Anglo Platinum, um, you know, portfolio and, and how he can sort of, um, you know, get better value um, out of that, out of those assets. It's, it's a substantial part of the, of the portfolio. And then again, also on the copper side, we've seen you know very disappointing uh, results coming out. Um, uh, you know, there's there's definitely some some attention from his side that that is required. And and and, and maybe lastly, a third one is is, is Minas Rio. You know, the iron ore project in Southern America, which um, which we've seen you know capex totally running out of control. And you know, there's some odd decisions that they will have to make on that whether they'll 
uh, perhaps sell a, a section of, of that off, um, you know, perhaps at the press prices, or whether they will push through and, and, and um, you know, and, and, and if they believe enough in the asset. So a couple of, of, of key areas, you know, I guess that one that, that, that will require his attention.